I'm Rob from Skid Steer Genius, and today I'm going to show you how to quickly get an SG60 up and going. So the first thing you want to do is, this is the Bobcat control harness. It goes to a microcomputer that's down inside here. So the, what I've done just to speed things up is I've just pulled this out, we just want to throw that away. It's absolutely useless. This whole control system is here to make you think that you can't use this on other machines, but you can. I'm showing it on a Bobcat today, but I actually don't even use their control system. I ha have one of our super controllers wired in here. To operate this so I don't even I don't even bother with the Bobcat system anymore so what I have here is I have two harnesses part numbers are because this one has Delphi's on it it's a SG BPH 14-7-9 DP DP stands for Delphi and that's what you see here the type of connectors that are in the back here are Delphi connectors so that's why we have these ones they're very easy to identify by the little blue caps that you see so if you look inside your attachment you see blue caps Nobody else uses that, you know it's Delphi. The other option is Deutsch, which we don't see usually in this attachment, but I never say never anymore. So that's the first harness. This is a seven output harness that's meant to operate the brake or sometimes also called a dump valve. Um, and I'm gonna get into that and show you what the differences are. This is the other harness. It's an SG BPH 14-6-9 DP. So this only has six outputs. And again, I'm gonna show you in a, in a shortly here just why we would use six over seven on this. But basically what we wanna do is when we start this up, we'll start it up and we'll try and run the drum. If the drum spins, then you, without having any electrical connected, then you wanna use a six. If it doesn't spin, you wanna use the seven because the seven has an extra circuit on it that helps to release the drum. In this case, we've actually run this thing up and I know that it spins freely without anything, so I can just use my six. And I'm gonna show you now how to connect it. Okay, so what you're gonna see here when you open up the bag, it's a nine foot harness. It's got Delphi connectors on one end and there's a little blue tool in here. You're gonna see this in every one of our packages. We include this as a just in case. Doesn't mean that you're gonna need it, but in case you do, we always give you this tool. In the case of using it on, on old Bobcats with 14 pin, or Kubota, Case, New Holland. Uh, you don't need to change anything. Everything just plugs right in. However, if you're using a Cat D series, you're gonna have to move two pins. If you're using a John Deere, you're gonna have to move the ground pin. Uh, or inside a lot of the newer connectors, if you open this up, that you'll see a jumper inside here. And it's jumped to ground. And it comes off a of B. All you wanna do is just strip back the, uh, the shrink tubing that we put on there and push that into A. And that's for John Deere. And th that, what that'll do is that'll move your ground and share your ground between A and B so it'll make it so it works. The only reason we don't put that in is because if it goes on a Caterpillar D series, then we have a problem. This Caterpillar D series uses that as a control line in, in A. So once again, it's just one of these funky little nuances that we have to know about when we're working with these machines. But we try to be as ingenious as possible when we make these uh, harnesses up so that it's as simple as, as possible when you get it out there and you try and install it in the field. So now let's do the install and I'll show you how simple it is. Now this is specifically for you Cat D series people. What you're gonna do on this is this is pin for standard. What you're gonna do to pin it for, for Cat D series is you're gonna move the pin that's in G to A and the pin that's in H to J. Now that'll make it universal so it works with your machine. However, if the attachment is a high flow attachment, you wanna use that jumper that we installed in here that goes to ground and you're gonna put that in either K, and that K is if it's an XPS, or you're gonna put it into M if it's a XHP. So you have to be very careful and know which one that you're gonna put it in because otherwise, what'll happen is you'll turn the machine on and you'll turn on your high flow and it won't go on and you won't, you won't know why it's not going on. Another thing to think about is this is a Bobcat attachment. Bobcat outputs are backwards to everybody else. So you have to make sure that you take the couplers off and swap them. So put the male where the female is and the female where the male is on the end of the hoses to the attachment. When you do that and you go to use the detent selection inside your machine where you push and lock it on so that it's running, you will now be able to select high flow and high flow, high flow will operate. If you don't do that, it will let you select high flow and you will turn high flow on, but because you're going in reverse to get it to work, high flow doesn't actually operate. On most modern machines, high flow is only, only operates in one direction. It does not operate in reverse. Even though the light's on and it says high flow's on, it's not actually running high flow. So those are things that you really have to consider and pay attention to when you first get the attachment. 
Make sure that you've got the flow going the right direction. You could identify that by following it down to the block here. There's a little, uh, it's actually stamped on the side of the block where it says P for pressure and T for tank. You want to make sure that pressure is coming from the pressure port of your machine, which on, on most modern machines, the male is the pressure, the female is the return or the tank. Bobcat is exactly the opposite. Female is the pressure and male is the return. So make sure you've changed that over and then you're good to go. Okay, so to speed things along, and you'll actually see this in one of our other videos, I've actually already gone and marked what each solenoid does. How I do that is I take my primary pair and I plug them in, or I'll take a battery, a separate battery, and I'll just run the attachment and I'll plug it in and try each one. And then all I do is I write on the side of the solenoid what each function is. And that makes it really simple when I come and I wanna actually map my wires. Now, when you buy one of our harnesses, you'll get an instruction pack that shows you exactly what wire does what. However, this machine does not set up the same way in every single different type of skid steer. And the reason for that is that every skid steer has different controls in different locations. So what we do is we have pairs. So our orange and green is one pair and that's our primary. So if we look here, this is our extend and our retract. Now that's not a primary function as far as I'm concerned. What is, is our left and right. So I'm gonna put my primary function, which is my orange and my green wires, and I'm gonna plug them in and I'm just gonna randomly do this because all I do is if I'm not happy with the direction, I just get out and unplug them and swap them. I'll put the bottom one on top and the top one on bottom if I'm not happy with the, the direction it's going. So say in my, in my handles, if I want it to go left or right and I want it to follow the direction of my joysticks or my buttons or whatever, I will map these in that direction. So that's my left and right. My secondary function is my white and my pink or red. Sometimes it's red, sometimes it's pink. Now, this is up and down. That I would call that a primary function. So I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna plug these in random this first time around. And then we can see what it does. Okay, again, your results are gonna be different because every machine is a little bit different. Now, my next one, my last function, is my blue wire and then my white with black. So I'm just, again, just gonna randomly pop those in here. Okay, so what I just did was I ran it and I, my up and down and my extend retract are backwards. So all I do is I come down here, this is my extend retract, of course it's the hardest one to get to. So I pop it off and I take the top one and I put it on the bottom and I take the bottom one and I put it on the top. And then the other one was my up and down. So that's right here. That was backwards. So I take, again, I take the top, put it on the bottom, bottom, put it on the top, and that's it. So now I'm gonna give you the pin out on this. So for most of you that are running just standard controls in the machines, what I have here is on my retract, which is the top solenoid. I have my black white wire. On the bottom one for extend, I have my blue over here. On my up and down, my down is red, my up is white, and then in the back here for my left and right, my left is green, and my right is orange. That's on our six channel harness. Again, I'm not using the brake on this one. If, uh, if you really wanna use the brake, then contact us, because we have another way of actually having to do this. But in this situation, 
It's a very inexpensive harness to operate this. You're up and going, if you follow this video, you're up and going in about 10 minutes. So this is just how simple it is to get uh, any Bobcat attachment going on any, any type of machine. It doesn't matter what the brand is. So I hope you learned something from this video. This is how to get a Bobcat SG60 stump grinder going on any machine. Yes, we are using a Bobcat in this instance, but this, this wiring, it's a 14 pin now that we're using. It'll work on any machine that's out there as long as you have enough controls. You do need to have six controls to operate this properly. However, you can bypass the extend, so you could extend it out and leave it extended all the time, and then just operate it with four controls, so there is a way of uh, doing that. Again, contact us through, through our website or look at our FAQ section, that'll show you. Uh, if you appreciate this video, please buy your products from us, and don't support the guys that are knocking off all our stuff. It's just really tacky. So we appreciate your business, and come back and see us often. Thank you.